What is an appropriate age to start talking to your kids about sex? I get this question so often and I want to share three very practical tips with you today that's going to help overcome your fear of doing this. I just was talking to someone yesterday um, about how their husband is just like for the last year, you know, they've had this book to talk to their kids uh, about these issues and puberty and stuff and the father just has not done it yet. It's just gripping and holding on. And Listen, I get it. I understand that and I want to share this with you. Um, one thing that you may be shocked to learn is that studies show that for high school and for college age kids, they ask them who influences you the most when it comes to sex and relationships. And you know, at that stage, especially for those of you who have teens or, or young adult children, you know, it's like, well, the media and their friends and the music they listen to. But do you know what their answer was? You guessed it, their parents. Okay, so we cannot um, be silent in this time, especially in these years, eight, nine, ten years old, when our kids are forming their worldview, their, the, the cement of the way they believe and think, it's so soft. And we need to get in there and we need to be able to share with them um, you know, what it is that they can do to have the best and healthiest um, sex lives as well as relationships and relationship to sexual issues. Okay, so of course, this is all age appropriate discussions, but I want to share these three things with you um, today, okay, to overcome your fear. Number one, you're not an expert, I get it. So use resources, lean on other experts. One of the reasons why we hesitate as parents is we have this question like, what if my child asks me a question and I don't have the answer? Listen, I just want to release you right now from the pressure of being the, the great answer parent, okay? You don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. What we can do instead, it's very practical, is to lean on the books or the articles or the video series or online courses like the one that I have at FamilyTechGamePlan.com. Um, and I want to share a couple with you here today, especially for younger kids, um, because we can start, unfortunately, we have to start, especially when it comes to pornography or issues of, of um, sexual assault or people touching you in the wrong way. Um, we've got to start young. I've started with my four-year-old already. Um, here's a great resource, Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, Junior. Um, and it's just real simple. Again, it just goes through some just simple stuff like, hey, if you see something online, see something that you shouldn't see, you know, just close it, look away, you know, run away and talk to mom and dad. There's just some simple things there um, that you can teach your kids. Here's another great one. I think I mentioned this in an earlier video, the swimsuit lesson. And this talks about where your bathing suit covers your private parts, your swimsuit, that is where people should not be touching you. Um, of course, outside of your parents or your or, or a doctor, if your parents are in the room there, um, but no one else should be touching you there um, in your private parts. And so we walk um, kids through that even at a young age. Um, but even like I said the other day, like with my 11 year old, I walked um, him through this again. So this is not just for super small, um, super young kids, but also for uh, older elementary kids. If you have middle school to teens, I just want to throw this book on the table, Girls Uncovered. And this is definitely for men and young men as well. So dads, don't skate out of this. This is not just for moms and daughters. This is definitely for young men because the concept here is uh, such a powerful line that they share. Sex is sexist. We're going to talk about that in another video because you need to understand that. Um, but really, therefore, because women uh, usually are on the, you know, get the short end of the stick when it comes to the consequences of unhealthy sexual relationships, therefore, young men should be the most sensitive and the most bold and courageous in living a healthy sexual life. So anyway, I don't want to get into all of that. That's point number one. Use resources, okay? All right. Point number two, again, because you're not super answer person, tell stories. Just share stories from your own life. First, kids love, your kids love to hear about your failures, okay? <laughs> but I call these redemption stories because your failures also turn into lessons. They turn into great and powerful life lessons. You don't have to make it long. Just learn how to get the highlights. I'm still working on this. Don't go on bunny trails. Just get the highlights. Hit them with the highlights of the story and what you learned. Kids love that and our kids love that. But when it comes to these other issues too, 
um, relationships or sex in an age-appropriate way, share those things because those aren't the things that you're sharing out loud at the dinner table. You're not talking about these things in public. So when you share those more personal things with your child in book time or in those heart-to-heart -heart connections in a private space, it's very powerful and it helps your child grow trust in you, build a relationship with you because they recognize, wow, you're sharing sensitive information with me. You're entrusting that to me. Um, and so that's really powerful. Plus, they get to learn a lesson. You also want to make sure that you're creating a safe space with them because when you share your failures and you open up, it so much more helps your young people, your kids to open up to you when they struggle and go through some things. So oftentimes at the end of those stories or after we've read a page in a book or something, I ask them, do you hear of this stuff in school? Um, you know, does this, what stood out to you and what it is that I was reading or what I shared? And sometimes a simple question like that can really open up a great conversation. Okay, lastly, number three, fake it till you make it, okay? It's just the reality. <laughs> you have to do some acting, okay? <laughs> I've done some acting in my life and I just, it comes into play now, okay? And what I mean by that is you're not being fake. What I mean is your kids may ask you a question or you might read something in one of these books that you just weren't prepared to read. I remember when I was doing that with my first child, um, and I was cold reading, meaning I just was reading it live to him the first time I was reading it. And some of these things were talking about puberty issues and wet dreams and all this stuff. And I was like, whoa, what am I doing? What am I reading out loud? But you've got to fake it till you make it. Just act like this is normal life. Because the truth is, it really should be. Now raise your hand if your parents talk to you about these things in an ongoing way, in a very transparent and non-awkward way. No, none of us had that, right? Very few of us did. And so we have to build a new culture. You're building a new culture, mom and dad, in your family. And that's okay. But before you feel like it's normal, you have to act like it's normal. Eventually, your feelings will follow and this will become more confident, more bold. You'll feel this more and more. But at first, you're not going to. So fake it till you make it. If, if, if your kids begin to share things with you that, or say terms that their friends said or talk about things that their friends are doing or watching on porn or whatever, it's like, don't freak out. Okay, you know what? Forget that friend. I'm cutting you off from that friend. Like, Don't go into what we talk about in our online course, the freaky, scary. Don't go into that realm. Stay reasonable and just listen because you have to create a, a safe space for them. Above all things, they need to know. When I'm talking with mom and dad, I know that I'm, uh, it's a safe place for me to share, okay? All right, listen, there's a lot more tips and a lot more practical things that we talk about at familytechgameplan.com. Um, there's a free webinar there that you can watch and then we invite you into the online course. If you need a hand <laughs> having these conversations, beginning these conversations, cracking into this stuff with your kids in the online course, I walk you and your kids through that together. So it's a powerful resource. Like I said, lean on someone else, lean on the experts. And I'm not saying I'm an expert in that sense, but I am leaning on experts myself and I've done all that work so that I can share it with your family. Okay. If you have any questions or any other things that you want to tackle in future videos, I'm trying to do this every single day. I want you to ask those questions in the comments below uh, and make sure to uh, share this with a friend or tag another parent that you know this could help. All right, mom and dad, you can do it. I believe in you. Talk to you soon.